In the examination of the neck veins, we're trying to determine two things. One, what is the jugular venous pressure? And secondly, what are the waveforms like and are they abnormal in, in any way? The first task is to find the pulsation of the neck veins. And so we're seeing a pulsation here and another pulsation here. And the question is, is that venous? To call something venous, we have to apply a few criteria. If it's a venous wave, it'll have a bifid flicking quality. It will definitely change with the respiration. So as he breathes in, you see it sink down. As he breathes out, you see it sort of rise up in the neck again. It'll also change with the position of the bed. So if we were to sit him up, it would sink down. If we lay him back, it would be uh, much more visible. So applying all those criteria and also the fact that it's not palpable, venous pulses are not palpable, whereas arterial pulses are, we conclude that this is a venous wave. And I'm now going to turn the lights down just so that you can see this a little bit better. And we're going to focus on the two waves. The first wave is called the A wave. And the second is called the V wave. A wave represents atrial contraction. It happens just before S1. The V wave happens from the AV valves bulging back into the atrium. And it happens just after S1. But if his heart rate is slow, which it is, he's going at about 65 or 66 a minute, you could actually call the neck veins out just by observing them coming in couplets like this. So I'm going to call them out for you. AV, 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 AV. And these veins are, these, these uh, waves are not abnormal. There are many abnormalities of the A and V waves and the descents that are to be found uh, in the text. We're now going to measure the jugular venous pressure. And so what we have to do is to measure it and see how far the highest level of this venous impulse is from the sternal angle. Here's the sternal angle. I'm going to draw a horizontal line from the highest point of the venous impulse. And then my task is to measure the distance between this horizontal line and the sternal angle. Let's say that the distance between my ruler, let's say the distance was about two centimeters, that the upper border of that venous impulse was two centimeters above the sternal angle. We would now add five centimeters to get to the center of the atrium, and we would report that as a jugular venous pressure of seven centimeters. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.